good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Jan, and as Shadia has already said, uh, I come from a small country, Slovakia. Uh, I spent most of my professional career working for Slovak government, where I had to face um, many problems arising from conflicts between uh, conservation and forest management. Uh, so I was naturally really curious how are these issues uh, being solved in the rest of the world. So where else should I come if not to World Forest Institute and World Forestry Center? Uh, the original title of my research was uh, Comparison of Nature Conservation Impacts on Forest Management uh, between regions of Central Europe and Pacific Northwest, which is really long and boring. Uh, and the most important question that, that I was really asking myself was, can managed forest uh, reach or achieve conservation goals? And this is the topic that I would like to talk a bit more right now. But first, let me talk about my country. Well, as I said, Slovakia is a small country that lies in Central Europe and is famous for not being Slovenia. <laughs> well, uh, Slovakia as a separate state was established 24 years ago in 1993, and in 2004 we also became member state of the European Union. Uh, to give you a better geographical perspective, uh, Slovakia is approximately as north as Seattle, and also our climate is very similar. Um, Size-wise, uh, Slovakia is small. Um, our acreage is approximately just one-fifth of uh, Oregon's. However, our population is larger, approximately by a million inhabitants. Uh, but let's talk about forests. Proportionally, both Oregon and Slovakia have approximately 45% of area covered with forests. However, taking into account our small size, um, Slovak forest land is only one-sixth of Oregon's. And despite having very similar climate, our tree composition is quite different. Two-thirds of Slovak forests are hardwoods, uh, with beech being the most dominant tree species in Slovakia. So, when I joined this program, I was really curious about forest management from the view of policies and acts, and I was quite surprised how much does type of land ownership influence which legislation applies to forest management. Uh, federal government owns the most forests here in Oregon, and I figured out that they must follow uh, National uh, Environmental Policy Act, National Forest Management Act, uh, and also meet requirements set in Endangered Species Act, Clearwater Act, and I found out that the key driver of forest management in federally owned forest is public pressure, which is uh, pushing uh, the numbers down. Uh, another big group of um, forest landowners are private landowners. Uh, they must follow uh, Endangered Species Act, Clean Water Act, and also Oregon's Forest Practices Act. But I divided this group into two smaller subgroups, and it's large industrial private landowners, uh, which are driven by profits, so they naturally want to um, increase the number of uh, the amount of timber being harvested in their forest. And small private landowners who usually manage their land based on their personal values. Uh, state, as another significant forest landowner, must follow pretty much the same set of rules and is also driven by public pressure. However, in, here in Oregon, the public pressure also wants to. Uh, increase the number of timber being harvested because of the revenue that must go to common school fund. Uh, tribes, um, they must also manage their uh, forests um, according to uh, Endangered Species Act, Clean Water Act, but they also follow their own ordinances. And from my experience, each tribe manages their own land based on their tribal values. On the other hand, forest management in Slovakia is very different. Uh, the same set of regulation uh, applies across uh, all types of ownerships, but there is a great dualism between forestry policy and conservation policy, meaning uh, the forestry has its own forestry act, which is governed by Ministry of Agriculture, and conservation has Nature and Landscape Protection Act, which is governed by Ministry of Environment. Uh, generally speaking, the key characteristics of Slovak forestry policy is strong focus on timber production, and conservation policy is usually considered as a cross-sectoral policy, influencing different land uses mm, across all land ownerships. Uh, so when I compared forest classes um, based on functions and values that forests are managed for, I was really surprised that uh, almost three quarters 
of slug forests are being harvested for timber or for timber production, leaving only one quarter for other purposes, such as motor resource and reserve purposes. And this state eventually <coughs> leads in uh, Slovakia harvesting more wood than Oregon. And bear in mind our really small size and just one sixth of Oregon forests. So the main lessons that I learned here during my fellowship um, are very different, or are legal differences and cultural differences. Uh, legally, I think that nature doesn't really care about um, ownership borders and managing land in checkerboard pattern, as you can see in the first picture, um, isn't really sustainable on landscape level. And now talking a bit about Slovakia, timber-focused forest management eventually leads to overexploitation and ecosystem degradation, as is shown in the second picture. Uh, that is a part of Slovak National Park, and you can see how much it's changed uh, because of forest management based on Slovak Forestry Act. Uh, as long as different culture is concerned, uh, I generally notice a higher level of public awareness about forestry and conservation issues, and also stronger support for non-profit sector being involved in policy making processes. So to conclude, can managed forests achieve conservation goals? I really believe they, they can. Uh, it only requires unified rules, and it's a lesson that probably you should learn. <laughs> uh, and particularly in Slovakia, we should integrate our policies and communities. Uh, we must simplify the rules of conservation and recognize diverse function of forests. And we can't expect that us private landowners would just give up part of their income, so we must create other sources of income, such as payments for ecosystem services, carbon markets, or support agroforestry. So once I came back home, I only need to work on last four bullets, like no pressure. <laughs> yeah, and I would like to thank you for your attention, and I would particularly want to thank World Forestry Center and Harry Merle Foundation for supporting me here during my stay. And last but not least, I want to thank my hosts and my neighbors from Northwest 32nd Avenue, because you may... <laughs> You made my stay in Portland such a, such a nice experience. Thank you. <laughs>